God, that was so long ago. Uh, it's like... Gosh, I'm so old. Um, I first got online in 1994. When I was in the army, I was an army journalist. Oh, and an army journalist. Yeah, wow. and I think the first websites I ever went to, I, I think it, I can think of two. Uh, one was a, it was like a Simpsons fan site. It was like a message board where people were just talking about the Simpsons, and I was like the world. I was a big Simpsons fan, so I went. I was just reading about the Simpsons with other people, and uh, back before the internet, if bands didn't put lyrics on albums you didn't know what the hell they were saying and so i grew up in the punk rock scene where you couldn't hear half of what people were screaming anyway and so the other website i went to first website i went to was a site that just posted lyrics from bands i liked and i went just literally went just to print out lyrics to my favorite songs so I could sing them, like my favorite Misfit songs, so I could finally <laughs> sing what the hell they were saying and not what I thought they were saying. And, and you realize, like, I was so <laughs> far off. Uh, yeah, those walls have completely and totally broken down if you're under the age of 40. And um, <laughs> if you're over the age of 40, well, yeah, I can be around too much longer anyway, but uh, yeah, no. But the, the era the same of thing. the era of uh, like being bullied or made fun of or looked down upon for playing or being into video games or internet culture in general mm -hmm. or even comic books uh, at this point is just completely and totally gone. It's funny. Everything about my childhood that I liked, I was derided and made fun of and tortured and bullied for, and every one of those things that every one of those kids bullied me for, they and their kids are next to me at the movie theater watching the yep. Avengers. Yep. And they are watching their kid play Fortnite. Yep. And they think it's cool. Yeah, everything I thought was awesome in 1985 is now awesome. It just took the world 30 years to catch up. I, I read comic books religiously from the cool. age of six to about 35. Specifically Marvel, DC, Mostly uh, Marvel and uh, I was a huge X-Men fan. Cool. Um, I never got super into DC, but I was a big Vertigo fan. I think it's really sad that anonymity has emboldened people to cruelty. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, having been in this career, and it may come from the fact that I've been doing this for over 15 years now, and we have, from day one, had a relationship and a conversation with our audience that's fairly intimate and, and honest, and so they have been very honest with me over the years. Uh, I think I've developed a pretty thick skin, and I think to be in this industry, you just need to. And that, I'm not excusing online trolls or any of those people that uh, torture and torment and bully online. It's terrible. Um, I mean, it's atrocious. But if you're gonna put yourself out in the public eye, you need to be receptive to the fact that you're gonna receive criticism. And you, we all have, we get so caught up in social media. Yeah. We get so caught up in what somebody on Reddit or on Twitter is saying about us. And you let like a negative comment on Twitter, like a, a shitty tweet, or a flippant comment on YouTube or on our website from somebody who just devalues something you did, uh, or is rude, or says like, "Wow, Jeff's going on Jeff's forty three, going on fifty three, you know, or <laughs> any of that stuff." Uh, that was me. It can, <laughs> it can, uh, it can, you know, we, we have to remember that we. We can stop all of that just by not looking at it. Yeah. You know, like you have the ability to turn all of it off just by doing this. <laughs> just to get rid of all uh, of that, because yeah, yeah, a lot of it's self-imposed. Yeah. I mean, we we go and it like you go you like I, I I'm I fall prey to that too. You do something that you think is really funny, and uh, maybe you make a joke in an episode, or you make a show that you think is going to be really funny, and you immediately go to the internet to judge to to see uh, the comments on it because yeah. you want. You want to make sure you're on the right track. You want to make sure you're. Uh, you want to make sure that you're uh, 
uh, creating something that resonates with the audience, that people enjoy, um, and and there might be a thousand comments about how great it is, and if you see 15 that say it's terrible, that's all you see, and that's yeah. all you think about. And the other thousand comments might as well not exist because you are so laser focused on the, the, the 10 dickheads that <laughs> probably didn't even watch it, you know? Just um, literally hit or, the button. Or, you know, and there's always constructive criticism in there as well, uh, and you take that too, but you really just like, at the end of the day, the thing that you go to bed at night, the last thing you think about is that guy calling you fat, yeah. or, you know, whatever. There are a million uh, things that, that apply to that. I would say for broadband internet was the moment when independent online creators like ourselves could service a global community in an efficient and accessible way. Nice. So I would say it's the, the birth of broadband. You know, Once we got past dial-up, when we made Red versus Blue, we put out the first episode of Red versus Blue in April of 2003, mm -hmm. you couldn't watch a video in a browser. You had to download and play it through Real Player or whatever. I mean, I guess you could watch Flash in a browser, but that was it. And so, um, and if you wanted to download an episode of Red vs. Blue, it, it was a while. Like, I remember we had a soldier who I was talking to at an event one time, and he said, I, when I was, I was deployed in Afghanistan, and I was literally, my unit, we were literally in a cave. And once a day, a satellite would pass over us, and we had an hour of internet. And we would download all the work stuff as soon as possible so that we could begin the process of trying to download an episode of Red vs. Blue. Because, and we would be like, you know, oh, we got 45 minutes. I hope it's enough to download this three and a half minute video. You know? um, <laughs> that so, sounds miserable. And you had to put some work into being a fan of something back in those days. You had to put, it was effort. You had to, you had to lock down your phone yeah. or say like, all right, well, I'm gonna, I want to watch this. Like, I remember watching, we, uh, we all worked at this tech support company, Bernie and Gus and I, mm -hmm. the guys that started Rich Teeth, or some of the guys that started Rich Teeth. And when the Phantom Menace trailer came out, the company shut down for like two hours where we were just watching a progress bar so we could download the trailer off Apple Movies so that we could watch it. You know, and it took like, we were an internet company and it took us three and a half hours to download a two and a half minute trailer. I remember that was the big, that was the big like, Holy shit! Everybody, stop what you're doing. There's a new star. There's a Star Wars trailer out, for Christ's sake, and we can download it on the internet, eventually, and watch it. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would make everyone on the internet have an identity associated to their real life persona, and uh, I would strip anonymity off the internet. Nice.